if as a consequence of an otherwise justified military operation, you happen to hurt, to kill, I guess, civilians, you will not be morally responsible for it. So is if to, 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 your, to the best of your knowledge, in a certain a particular military installation, there are no civilians, no civilian personnel. If you try your best to make sure that's the case, and then you attack the installation, and however, there were, turns out there were some civilians in there, and they die, well, the principle of double effect says you will not be held responsible for the morally responsible for that. Okay, now we are going to talk about conscientious objection. Conscientious objection. Chris, who was Cassius Clay? Who was Muhammad Ali? Huh? A boxer. And what happened to that boxer, Melissa? What? No. <laughs> Who told you that? Come on. Come on. What's the story of Muhammad Ali? What's the story of Muhammad Ali? He was a conscience subject. He's so famous. He refused to be drafted. Come on, guys. Okay, um, so um, he was a conscious objector. A conscious objector, is someone who, a conscious objector, is someone who refuses to be drafted or to join the army or to participate in a, in a particular military operation. There are two types of conscious objection, and there are universal draft system, as in Europe peacetime draft system, you're going to find always universal conscience objection. Meaning you're going to find people who say, I refuse to, to wear a military uniform, to be part of a military. I don't care if I don't have to go to a war. I just don't want to be part of a military period. That means universal refusal in any way to be part of a military. Under a no-volunteer system, like in the U.S., you're going to find selective conscientious objection. So um, this guy is in the military. He enlisted voluntarily, but now he's told he has to go and invade Iraq. And he says, I refuse. That's immoral because that war, he says, does not meet the conditions of the just war tradition. And therefore, he says, I have nothing against the military. I could go to other, you know, other wars or other uh, situations, but I will not participate in this particular war because I think it, it doesn't meet the conditions of the just war tradition, therefore it's immoral. Well, he's not objecting to the military as a whole. He's not a universal conscientious objector. He is a selective conscientious objector. He's, He's refusing to participate in one specific operation. We call that selective conscious objection. <clears throat> now, who's to say whether a war is just or unjust? Being a religious doctrine, essentially, who's to say that? Religious authority, right? So in, in the old times, when all Christians were part of a single church, pretty much under the Pope, it was the Pope who would say, this war is just or unjust. I have to say, the just war tradition never helped preventing a war. Because all parties to a war think they have the just cause and everything, so they will redefine the conditions. But the Chas World tradition has helped um, draft the, the uh, 
prisoners of war treaties and war treaties, the rules of engagement, you know, the rules of behavior in war, that has been really its main effect. So it's a very useful and very important body of theory, which is definitely used today, manipulated if you wish and everything, but still at least it gives some guidance. Okay. Um, today, um, what the Pope says may be of concern to Catholics only, pretty much. Um, and for the last, for the past three wars that the U.S. has embarked itself upon, um, the uh, Gulf War, the Afghanistan War, and the Iraq War, the Pope, the previous Pope, John Paul II, very forcefully declared those wars, the three of them, to be unjust, despite which nothing happened. The wars happened anyway. Okay? There is a difference between um, just war and holy war. Holy war is specifically religious war. The cause is religious. The Crusades were holy wars in Christianity, okay? A thousand years ago. So that cause, that war is called by a religious authority. It's called for by a religious authority, a pope, or religious authorities. The cause is by definition just to liberate, in the case of the Crusades, to liberate the Holy Land from the infidels, this kind of thing. And so the set of conditions is relatively different in there. It's already pre-established. Today there is no really a notion of a holy war in Christianity anymore, but in Islam there is still the, holy, the notion of the jihad. Jihad is the word for holy war in Islam. Okay? But jihad has been redefined by um, expert in, experts in, in, in Islam as an internal war against your own sinfulness, a war for, war for purification. But still, um, traditionally, jihad was an actual war, okay? it's called to war, to conquest, to force conversion of uh, infidels. Okay. What questions do we have? No questions for now? Okay, well, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this class.